I'm, I'm going to look at three decks. The um, Church of Light deck, which is this one. The, the Rider deck, you know. And uh, the Toss deck that I don't actually have, so there'll be something on screen for it. But before I get to that, I want to do a little bit of blatant advertising for myself and say that um, some of you may already know that I am put together the Taro Home Study Course. And if you've been thinking of buying it or thinking of taking a course somewhere, you might want to consider what I did. And at the moment and for a while, um, if you buy the course, you get a free reading from me. So anyway, I wanted to mention that and close to the beginning. So I'm calling this one, which is the best deck, because I couldn't figure out a way to say easily that some decks need you, the reader, to have specialized knowledge. And you can't really do that good a job with that particular deck unless you know, let's say, the Kabbalah or the, something about the tree of life, or you need to know astrology, or you need to know numerology, or you need to know some other ology. And so, trying to read those with those decks um, without having studied uh, particular subjects means that you can't do as good a job, and you, you're going to leave an out, out a lot of information, or you're going to misinterpret what a card means because they are, you know, designed and they're put together with particular um, uh, thoughts and particular information in mind. I, I want to look at these three decks and discuss a bit which is the easiest for the reader as well as for the questioner. And because you, you could have a card and you say to the questioner, the cards say you ought to do this and this, and they say why, and you say, well, because this card relates to this path in the tree of life. And they say, well, what's the true life? So sometimes if you're using a deck that has that kind of background, then you, can have to, you, can, you, you may have to give a lot of explanation, a long explanation to the questioner to sort of prove what you're saying or to, to make them realize that there is actually truth in what you're saying, you're telling them, or that the, the, the card has a particular meaning. And... Um, that can be kind of difficult. And I think it's good if a deck is something that the questioner can relate to or can make sense of immediately and on their own. So I pulled out this, this Three of Swords here. And so let's say it comes up and you say, okay, sometime in the past, you and the questioner, this card represents heartache, pain, suffering and sorrow. So maybe something went wrong between you then in the relationship. Maybe you said hurtful things to the person or they said hurtful things to you. And the questioner says, well, I see why you're saying that, and I can understand what you mean, but actually the person that I'm thinking about or I'm asking about had a heart attack not so long ago, and it did bring sorrow into his life and into mine and the lives of our friends as well. And so at that point, because the reader, uh, because the questioner recognizes something in the card, and it's the truth as far as they're concerned, the questioner is now engaged in the reading there they're participating, they're taking this more seriously now that they realise that, okay, you turn a card, it shows a heart pierced with swords, the person had a heart attack, this is working, it makes sense, and it means something, it's not just random. And so if you, if you use a deck like this, like I always use a writer deck, but if you can find some deck that doesn't need specialised knowledge on the part of the questioner or on the part of the reader, you're going to have a more friendly, I think, reading and there's going to be more chance of participation on the part of the reader or on the part of the questioner, rather. And I think that's a good thing. But you can't easily do that with the Church of Light deck. And this is an older deck, it's black and white. Nowadays, I think there's a, a co more coloured version, but it's not, it's not particularly colourful. And this happens to be the Eight of Swords, right? And so we've got the number eight here. We've got Saturn ruling that's this particular card. We've got up here the Capricorn decanate of Virgo. And we've got the, the illustration of the constellation. So with this one, you're basically dealing with Capricorn and Virgo. And so somebody may want to know, OK, what kind of person am I going to marry? And you get this card. And so you think, OK, Capricorn and Virgo. They're on the one hand, they're critical from Virgo. But at the same time, this is an ambitious individual because of Capricorn. And the, the, these being earth signs, there's a, a practical streak, uh, a practicality within the individual. 
Or you may want to know what's my health going to be like. So you've got Virgo that rules the intestines and the digestive system. And so you've been pointed to, you know, have a simple diet. Watch out for stomach upsets. That's on Capricorn rules the knees. So you may find it, you know, you're going to go on that skiing holiday. Watch your knees because Capricorn rules the knees. Or somebody may, may want to say, what, what job should I look for? And so you get Capricorn that rules government and Virgo that rules efficiency. And so um, uh, maybe you're going to work for the government or a large corporation. And maybe you're going to be an efficiency expert or um, uh, maybe an accountant or somebody or who gathers data that other people can make sense of. So you can get a lot of information from all these cards, but you really can't if you don't know the astrology and then you're dependent on reading somebody else's meanings and memorizing meanings and it's much more difficult to do a reading and it's also going to be sort of basically impossible for the questioner to say okay oh I see what you're getting at because you look at this card and it's not really giving a lot of information in the beginning or at once um, okay that's the church of light um, if you're using the toss deck, and I say I don't have a, a version of the toss deck, so something will appear on screen. You sort of need to know about the, the, the tree of life. Um, and this is a diagram of the tree of life, but you find that there are 22, there's 10 spheres and 22 paths between them all. But you find that not everyone agrees on what major trump, 22 major trumps after all, which major trump goes with which path. And that's a nuisance because you want you know, there to be consistency. So, the tree of life is a huge study. You also need to learn Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet and what each letter, which is also a word, what that means. And maybe you can do things with that. But again, it's not easy. It's not a quick entrance to using the tarot to answer questions. And it's a very tricky situation if the questioner doesn't know anything about the tree of life. The other thing is, I had to write this down because I'm not sure. And what we have here is the, the Knight of Swords is called the Lord of the Wind and the Breezes, King of the Spirits of Air. And, you know, if let's say we open a toss deck tomorrow, you and I, and we choose the, king, the, the Knight of Swords, what are we going to do with that phrase? It probably has a lot of meaning. And I'm not saying the toss deck is not a good deck. But in the beginning, or for a few months, how much sense can you make of that if you don't have the specialised background or the specialised knowledge to make sense of that kind of phrase? Another thing is that the Two of Swords, um, it should be on screen, but it's, this is called the Lord of Peace Restored, which is fair enough, and you can probably do something with the idea of peace restored, but it's also the Moon Decanate, in the sign of Libra, or ruling one of the decanates in Libra. So there's, there's certain astrological facts or factors that you really ought to know if you're going to make sense of the Two of Swords. And if you don't know what the astrology is and what it means and what it's trying to tell you, I have to wonder how good a job or how complete a job you can do for the questioner. So, if you want to look at astrology, go to www.astrologyinaction.org and take a look at the course that's on offer there. Um, it's on sale at the moment and if you want to know about it, it's a good price, half price at the moment, send an email to blltr at yahoo.com. And then you've got the old rider deck that people... So let's say somebody says, okay, uh, am I going to get... What's going to happen at my wedding? And you get the Eight of Swords. You're going to feel stuck. You're going to feel hindered. You're going to feel confined. You're not going to have the freedom that you want or freedom that you think you, that you deserve. And the questioner can look at this and immediately see, you know, maybe I'm actually making a bad move. Whereas, am I going to get that promotion? The Four of, Bat and four of Batons. People celebrating. It's like a wedding. There's vegetation up here. There's fruit. It's a good card. It's a good atmosphere. So, yes, it looks like it's coming along. So, what's the best deck? The writer deck. From the point of view of the questioner and the reader, especially in the beginning, because you don't need specialised knowledge. <laughs>